Hello. Today we're going to go over setting up a DS1 bird test on the T-Bird 5800. First you need to turn on your T-Bird 5800. And once you have the T-Bird 5800 powered on, you need to click on the test button in the top left hand corner here. Once you click on the test button, you should be brought to this view, which is where we can select the test we want to configure. To configure a DS1 BERT test, I'm going to click on DS1 slash DS3, scroll over and select DS1, then select DS1 BERT, and then terminate. You can also see you have the option to run a through test or a dual monitor test as well. Let's click on terminate, and that will now configure a DS1 BERT test. What you'll see now is we're now in our results screen view. You'll see that under summary status, I have a red screen. And if I move over to my LEDs here, you'll see that I don't have a signal present, nor do I have frame sync or pattern sync. And that's because I'm actually not connected to the circuit yet. So for DS1 tests, utilize the DS1 Bantam cables supplied with the test set and connect them to the DS1 test jacks on the top of the T-Bird 5800. I have now connected to the circuit via the Bantam cables, and you can see now that I have a signal present, frame sync, and pattern sync. So initially, I'm connected to the circuit. The first thing we need to do is actually configure what type of DS1 test we want to run. Let's click on the Setup button at the top right-hand corner here. Here, you'll see the first option is for your interface. Here we can see, for our interface, we can select our RX, or Receive Input. So right now, we're running a Terminate test. I could expand that checkbox and set it to be Bridge Mode or DSX monitor if I wanted to. So we'll leave it as a terminate test today. Your line code can be changed here. We have B8 VS or AMI. We'll choose B8 VS today. Your clock source can be changed depending if you're testing a CPE or network equipment. For CPE, you generally want to set this to recovered. And for network equipment, you normally want to set this to internal. Today, we'll set it to internal because we're going to test to a network element. We'll now move over to the left-hand side, and we can click on the framing tab. On the framing tab, you can now configure what type of framing you would like to utilize. The options are framing, or SF. Let's choose DSF today. We'll then move to payload on the left hand side here. Here we can configure our test to either test a full DS1 or test a fractional rate where we can test certain DS0 channels. So you'll say here the payload type right now is fractional. If I was to change that to bulk, I would actually be testing the entire DS1. Or if I change that to fractional rate, once again, you can see I can select which DSO channel to test, and I would now be testing it at a fractional level. For today's test, let's configure it as a full rate, but we'll choose bulk. The next configuration we have is our pattern. So we'll move to Pattern. Here, we can choose our Pattern mode, whether it be ANSI or ITU. We'll leave it as ANSI today. And then the type of pattern we are going to generate. And you see, as I expand this box, there are a large number of patterns you can select. The most common patterns 
you can see here are multi pats if I scroll down slightly you'll see we have multi pats you're also going to have the option to generate all one or all zeros one to the seven one to the seven unframed three and twenty four And there's certain different frames as well, like 2 and 8, T1, QRS, and so on. So for today's test, we're just going to select QRSS. But again, you can select any type of pattern depending on the test you want to run. And you can see there are a large number of patterns there you could select from. We can then move down to loop. And here, if you wanted to loop up a piece of equipment, you can actually configure the loop code. For this, you can see you've got your device type, which is either NIU, CSU, could be a repeater, and so on. So we were to choose NIU, for example. You can then see that you can select different codes, whether it be facility 1, 2, 3, or ESS. And then the response can be respond on or respond off. So this is when you're actually looped up by another test set. Obviously, respond off would mean that you would not respond to that loop command. A respond on would mean you would respond to the loop command and go into local loopback. So those are the basic setups for a DS1 BERT test. You have your interface parameters again. You have your framing parameters your payload, whether you want to test a complete DS1 or a fraction of a DS1, you have your pattern, and then you also have your loop settings. So if you've configured everything correctly, you can then click on the results button, and you'll see that we're now in our main results screen. If for some reason your screen is red because maybe you haven't connected to the circuit yet, go ahead and connect to the circuit and then click on the restart button to clear your stats. To verify that we're actually connected correctly to the circuit, let's generate a bit error. To generate a bit error, I'm going to move down to the bottom middle here, click on alarms and errors, and then over here for my error type, I'm going to select a bit error. And what I should see is that if I'm connected on a circuit with a loop in place, that error should come back to me. In order to have the loop in place, obviously you need to send a loop command. To do that, you would click in the loop box here, and there you can select your loop type again, and you can hit the loop up button, which will transmit a loop to that RM device. So I know that I've got a loop in place, so I'm going to insert an error, and you can see here I've inserted one bit error, and I've received that one bit error. So that means I'm on the circuit. So we've got a circuit, it's ready to test. Let's hit the restart key. Basically now, we can let the test run for as long as we want to verify certain statistics like bit errors and so on. Some common result screens you may want to look at are, for example, interface and signal. This is where you can see your receive level, frequency, BPVs, and so on. Another screen of interest would be payload and BERTs. So this is where you can see if, actually, if you've actually received any bit errors. So you can see here, pattern sync, pattern slip, bit errors, and of course you can see our error-free seconds. So how long have we run without receiving a bit error? If you're happy with your test, you can basically let it run for as long as you want. And then if you want to actually generate a report at the end of this, you can easily do that as well. By moving over to the bottom left-hand corner here, clicking on Reports, and then clicking on Create Report. You can then give it a name, click on Choose Contents, and here you can select the different contents that you want in your report. So that is how you run a basic DS1 DIRT test. And this brings us to the end of the training video. Thank you for joining.